probably the the easy way to 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 do this talk would to would would be to say just operate in everybody it's if you have a rotator cuff third go on operate it why not and unfortunately many person many people think like that i will try to 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 talk different about that the fundacion santa fe bogota is, is there I, you are welcome anytime in in bogota uh, i will put forward in this talk the recommendations that i think that are perfect to operate acute ruptures no doubt about that persistence or recurrence of symptoms <clears throat> and increase in, the, in tear size. Uh, it's, it's easy to talk about these indications because I would say everybody is, agrees with this. Talking about ac ac acute ruptures, uh, there are a few papers about this. This is from uh, England, from the United Kingdom. Dr. Pandey surely knows this. Uh, they have a, a social security system and some patients cannot be operated uh, acutely and when you compare those who are operated acutely and those who are not you can see the difference uh, we have known this for years but this is has been demonstrated in the literature talking about persistence of symptoms uh, you don't have to think that symptoms of rotator cuff are small sometimes they are really intense and many times they uh, 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 contribute to problems in the, in the daily living situations of the patients. So you have to take this seriously. And besides that, when you have symptoms, uh, recurrent symptoms, uh, that could mean that the uh, initial rupture could be even uh, bigger with time. And that has been demonstrated also by this article and many others, that when you have symptoms, you can have uh, uh, the, 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 the tear uh, active and progressive. The natural history of asymptomatic rotator cuff tears has been a matter of debate, but probably we will agree that when you have uh, symptoms, when you don't have symptoms, the tears could, could increase but in a less proportion when, when than when you do have symptoms. These proportions has been in this article calculated in 36% of these patients with time in three years of follow-up, they progress, but more than 60% of the patients didn't progress. So that's, it is it's important to know that. And probably this is the main uh, topic of this talk. Why not operate on all tears? I will have two slides for each, for each of these reasons that are that I think are important to not operate in everybody. First, the prevalence. We all know that it's very common to have a rotator cuff tears when you are when you are 50, and when you are 60, even better, even even more, and so on. This graphic is very uh, clear. You are familiar with this. I think you can see here the arrow. 30% of the people in the 60s have rotator cuff tears, 40% of the people in the 70s, and more than 60% of the people in the 80s. So as David Ring has said, this could be considered a common aspect of normal human aging. So you don't have to operate 30% of the world population when they are in, the, in their 60s. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have time to do that, even with all the good surgeons that are around. The progression is, it is important. You have to be uh, careful with that. Of course, uh, rotator cuff tears can progress, but not at the same rate. It is important, this article from Japan, they, they take in consideration two things. One, the size of the rotator cuff tear in, in this coronal view, and then the location of the tear in this sagittal view. When you have sizes between more than one centimeter and, and less than three centimeters, the progression of the tear is very clear. 
is, is not as clear when you have a small tears or when you have big tears that probably you, uh, the, the, the progression is, 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 is less uh, 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 rapid. The superior aspect, that is the more common aspect of the rotator cuff tear, is another, uh, another place where the rotator cuff progress more. So it is important to know in your first MRI uh, the location and the size of the tear to, to have an idea of how they are going to progress. Uh, some people say if you don't operate a rotator cuff tear, Early, you are going to have a rotator cuff arthropathy in the future. That's not true. The rotator cuff arthropathy of, is a reality, but it's not for everybody. The, it is clear that you can have small glenohumeral changes, ar arthritic patients uh, changes, but minimal, minimal. And this is a follow-up of eight years, but you, you can have uh, 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 articles with more follow-up where the, uh, the arthritic changes are minimal. Of course, some patients, especially the ones with massive rotator cuffs, uh, will develop rotator cuff arthropathy. But by any means, this is the rule. Very important, uh, Daniel showed this in his talk. He showed a very graphic and terrible examples of uh, metastasis or tuberculosis, but and, and that and he's he's true in that, but these are the, the more common uh, source of pain in rotator cuff, and you are not going to help the patient operating on him if he has any of this. So you have to be careful. The patient could have a rotator cuff and some of these situations, and the and the pain could be from these situations, not for the rotator cuff. You have to be very careful of that. And there is, an, there is no correct correlation or clear correlation between the, the size or the severity of the cough tear and the symptoms. You have to be careful of that also. Daniel show an example of that. The mental health, every day is more important. Some patients relate to his shoulder because of mental problems. Of course, nobody is saying that uh, the rotator cuff pain is a mental problem. No, but there are patients in which you have to be careful with his uh, mental status before operating on them because you can do the best surgery but the patients could continue with pain. Two more slides for talking about the non-surgical treatment. As, as Daniel, I was with Rockwood also and he was a champion of uh, uh, the, the the, what, what he called the orthotherapy. Uh, orthotherapy is the thera therapy do uh, by the patient himself. And a lot of patients will uh, did much better with, with therapy before doing surgery. Some of them never needed surgery. This is a very interesting comparison. This uh, Jay Chulio, Daniel, you remember him? He was at your meeting in Buenos Aires, wonderful person. And he compared the patients with and without surgery, but very important, after recommendation of surgical repair. Some of his patients, after the recommendation, decided not to have the operation. And they follow them, so they have the same indications for surgery at the beginning. But as you can see here, surgery and non-surgery patients, uh, after, I think, two years of, of follow-up, did similarly. In all these scores, constant UCLA, uh, shoulder simple tests, et cetera, they did similarly. So really with time, the surgery in this uh, cohort uh, was not as better as we think surgery is. Surgery is not perfect. This is an article from Madsen. Um, and Madsen, all, many times says very interesting things. He has this graphic in his article. As you can see, the, there has been a, an explosion of articles about rotator cuff tears after 2000 and especially after 2005. But in, in spite of this explosion of articles, the post-op score here in purple has been the same. So no matter how many, how many articles you write, no matter how many 
patients you operate, the scores are similar. So, uh, and why is similar? Because we, as Daniel said, we are facing a biological problem. So you can do the best surgery, but the biology, you cannot change the biology. And probably that's why the post-op score is similar, even with thousands and thousands of operations uh, now uh, much, much more than before. Finally, not everybody wants surgery. That is, that is, that's important. This is from, uh, from uh, Sorik, uh, Christian Gerben and his colleagues. And he saw people that decided not to have surgery for many reasons. These, these are some of the reasons. And after they decided not to have surgery, they went uh, fairly well. As you say here, patient satisfaction and the size of the tear was not very, was not very big. These were the reasons for the patients to not to have uh, surgery. Some of them improved, some of them have economic problems or they, they didn't want to have long rehab after surgery, et cetera. But they didn't do so bad when they refused to have surgery. So these are reasons for not to operate. You can, you can uh, uh, be, you don't have to be disturbed by that because if we operate the patient that I said in the beginning, we will have plenty of patients to operate. Uh, the, the situation is not that we are not going to have patients anymore. The situation is that we have to operate the ones who really need the operations. And why? And, and I'm finishing in, in two slides. Because we all agree that the benefit of a surgery is to change the situation of a patient. If the patient doesn't have symptoms or doesn't want to have an operation, or we don't give him the opportunity of a non-operative uh, uh, treatment, etc., the benefit will be uh, questioned, but the risk remains the same. The appreciation of the patient of a surgery is easy when the patient has pain and cannot sleep and his uh, 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 daily activities are impaired. But if the patient doesn't have uh, many symptoms, he will not appreciate the result and he will blame you for, for pain and problems after surgery. The complications, if, if you have a complication with a patient with all the indications, you don't have a problem. If you have a complication with in, in a patient, in a patient that didn't need the surgery in the first place, you will be in great, in great trouble. So this is the final uh, slide. I will go back to these recommendations, acute ruptures. And for the last two, persistence or recurrence of symptoms or increasing tear size, you, be, you have to, to do a follow-up of your patients. That's, that's the key here. You have to follow up your patients. Even in, in patients that don't have symptoms, you should have an MRI one or two years after the first consultation. And if the, the tear size is increasing, you should think in operate even with no symptoms. So this, I hope this will be helpful for, for you. Thank you very much.